Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on the Level 3 Diploma in Criminology here at Beacon Academy. I'm Mrs Morell, Head of Department and I work alongside Miss Barnshaw, who you'll also meet in this presentation, and Mr Hutchison and Mr Braidwood. So first of all, you might be wondering what you might be able to do with a qualification in a subject like criminology. Well, it's a really great subject to study if you might already be thinking that you might be interested in going into some of the uniformed services, for example, working with the police or with the prison service or in social work. Criminology will enable you to find out more about these particular agencies because we study all of them on the course. Now also uh, we get asked quite a lot about whether universities will accept criminology as an A-level. It is an A-level equivalent subject, it's called a diploma, but we do find that universities are quite happy to accept it. However, if you want more information about this, do please get in touch with us and we can give you uh, more guidance. So just to let you know, first of all, the overall structure of the course here at Beacon. So criminology is a two year course and it's divided into four units. The four units comprise two controlled assessments and these are completed under exam conditions in a computer room in the school. And this usually takes place in November or December of each year. So from September up to November or December, students are preparing for this controlled assessment and they'll be working generally in a computer room, compiling notes that they will in fact be able to take in with them into the assessment. Then there are also two other units and these are both formal written exams, which students would sit in the exam hall. And they will do the first exam in May of year 12 and then the second exam in May of year 13. So in the first year, in year one, when students are in year 12, they will complete the first two units, unit one and unit two. So just to say a little bit about unit one, which is called Changing Awareness of Crime. And as I said originally, unit one is a controlled assessment unit. So in unit one, we look at uh, the first topic we start looking at, in fact, is what are the many different types of crime that do take place in our society? And students need to be aware of these different types of crime. So, for example, white collar crime, honour crime, domestic abuse, hate crime. But they also need to be able to analyse these types of crime and find out information. For example, who is a typical victim of these crimes? And who is a typical offender? And are the public even aware of this kind of crime? That leads me on to the next point, which is how do we even measure this type of crime? And also, why do crimes sometimes not get reported to the police? Equally, we know that mild crimes can sometimes be linked to more serious crimes. And this is often known as the broken windows effect. So we get students to think about how we could possibly raise social awareness of this phenomenon in society. In Unit 1, the final section is all about looking at what we mean by a campaign, because if we want to raise awareness amongst the public about crimes and try to reduce the level of criminality in society, then one way to do that is to run a campaign so that people can be more aware of what is actually happening. So we discuss this a lot with our students. And then they, in fact, will design their own campaign, which will be raising awareness of an unreported crime. So that's just a brief introduction to the first part of what you'll study in criminology. I'm now going to hand over to Miss Barnshaw, who's going to tell you a lot more about the rest of the course. I hope you find this interesting and I look forward to meeting many of you later on. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Miss Barnshaw. So I'm going to start off by talking to you about Unit 2, which is your examined unit that you'll be studying in Year 12. So this unit is mainly about criminological theories. So looking at 
reasons why someone may become a criminal. So we will look at biological reasons. This includes things such as XYY theory, which is the idea that males may be born with an extra Y chromosome. And this chromosome has been linked to aggressive behaviour. And some serial killers, such as John Wayne Gacy, who's an American serial killer, have been found to have this chromosome abnormality. We also look at sociological explanations for crime. So there's this idea that everyone has um, particular goals that they want to achieve in life. So materialistic things such as a nice house and a nice car and to feel successful. And most people will do that legitimately. So uh, go to school, get an education, work hard, get a good job, earn money in order to buy the things that they need. However, some people may not have the means or the abilities or the resources to do it in a legal way and therefore turn to crime in order to get what that what they want. So that may be um, stealing in order to be able to buy things that they desire. We also look at psychological explanations for criminality. So um, a particular theory we learn within that is Isenck's first personality theory. And that's about how some people might be um, more risk takers. They might crave excitement more than others. Some people might score highly on traits like psychoticism. So quite a cold and uncaring personality, lacking empathy, so unable to um, feel guilt or remorse. And we would look at that within the psychological explanations. And then finally, in this section, we look at theories and how they have le led to particular policy developments. So um, how we actually treat offenders. So do they go to prison? Do they need anger management training? Do we do restorative justice with them to try and rehabilitate them? And all of this content would be covered in Unit 2. OK, so how will you be assessed? Well, Unit 2 is an exam. It's an hour and a half long and it generally takes place around May time. This exam is worth 25% of your overall A-level grade. So you will have done Unit 1 from the controlled assessment and then Unit 2 from the exam. And we start teaching you all of this content after you've sat Unit 1 controlled assessment, which is generally around Christmas time going into January. OK, year two criminology, I'm not going to say as much about this because it's um, further away, but just to give you a brief insight in unit three, this would be the controlled assessment unit. It's called crime scene to courtroom. And this is a really interesting uh, unit where you will learn what actually happens at a crime scene. So when a crime has happened, you've got certain personnel that arrive on the scene and have really important jobs to do. For example, a crime scene investigator, when they arrive, they will need to put on their protective clothing. So a crime scene suit, um, foot covers, gloves, and then they're responsible for going around the crime scene and collecting evidence that may have been left. So that could be fingerprints, blood samples, hair samples. And we will look at how they actually collect that evidence and how they need to uh, store that evidence in order to make sure it isn't contaminated in any way. So particular temperatures it has to be kept at. And also as well, the importance of the crime scene investigators making sure that they don't contaminate the crime scene by, for example, making sure they've got their gloves on and that they don't walk in and out of the crime scene without changing their uh, foot covers and what happens if they do, what can that mean for the case? And it may be that that evidence then can't be used or that they don't get a conviction in court. So that unit is all about the process from the crime scene all the way to sentencing and whether the offender is found guilty or not guilty. Unit four, which is your a second examined unit that you'll do in year 13. This is called Crime and Punishment. And within this section, we really explore things like prison. Does prison actually work? Um, we know that in 2017, 
46% um, of people, adults leave in prison, re-offended within a year. That's quite high. The whole purpose of prison is that we hope that when people leave, they go on to live law-abiding lifestyles, but actually we know that's not always the case. So within this unit, we look at the criminal justice system and the different agencies and all the jobs they do and the challenges they face. For example, um, lack of funding, um, mental health issues for prisoners, um, police being under-resourced and all of those kind of issues. So that's unit four and that will be your exam at the end of year 13. So just to very briefly recap how the course is assessed, in year 12 or year one, you will sit your unit one controlled assessment and then your unit two exam. Both of these are worth 25% of your A-level. And then in year 13, year two, it will be the exact same process, unit three controlled assessment, followed by your unit four exam, both worth 25%. Your exams will be graded A star to E, um, and you will get that grade at the end of year 13, and that will combine all the four units that you have set. Now, it's really important that you pass both your unit one and two in order to progress to the year 13 units. OK, what you need. So to do well in criminology, of course, we really want you to be interested in crime. We want you to be the kind of person that is interested in crime in the news, uh, watches documentaries, enjoys finding out about real life cases, thinks about um, things like prison um, and the importance of um, ways to deal with offenders. You also need to be able to write at length using key terms. So what we mean by that is a lot of the um, lessons in criminology when you're planning for your controlled assessment will be researching cases and researching information and then being able to take that uh, information you found and put it into your own words and type it up as notes. And that will include being able to use key terminology that we have taught you. Um, you need to be organised, so keeping good notes and also working really, really hard. So in lessons, you need to work hard towards your units, but then outside of lesson, you need to put in that same amount of time to make sure that you get the best possible outcomes for you. Up on the screen, you'll be able to see the textbook. Now, um, this is just to show you what you may think about buying in the future. Um, there is a revision guide as well, but generally the textbook is more helpful and you can use this especially in your examined units. We also would like you to have a ring binder so that when we give you handouts, you can keep those safe and some file dividers for the different units. And probably most importantly, a memory stick. So as a lot of the work will be done on the computer, it's so important that you have saved it in more than one place. So having a memory stick is really vital to criminology to avoid you losing any of your work. OK, so finally, thank you for watching this presentation. We really hope that it's been useful and it's answered some of your questions and helped you to work out whether you think criminology is the subject for you. If you do have any further questions or concerns, please feel free to contact Mrs Morrell and her email is up on the screen. But I just really wanted to say thank you very much and we hope to see some of you in September.